Welcome to Con Corner. I'm Tina, and today I'm making um, air fryer fried chicken uh, thighs. Um, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to use barley flour instead of regular flour to, to coat them in. Um, I made some uh, I made some uh, um, chicken wings um, last week. And uh, or two weeks ago, I guess it was whenever Super Bowl Sunday was, and uh, I did them with no coating at all, and they the skin crisped up really nicely. But for this, I want to try doing a coating, and I want to try and see how the uh, uh, oops, <laughs> how the barley flour does. So let me get me a get me a cup towel here draw my hands as I move along. Alright, I have four chicken thighs and I will do them in, in batches of two in the uh, air fryer. Alright, there we go. Now, my, this is one of my Christmas presents. My, da our, my dad and, and stepmother got me a full set of these beautiful um, pink depression glass mixing bowls. Um, I just uh, was over, overwhelmed. They're so pretty. I'm going to use a half a cup of the barley flour to start off with. And in that I'm going to put half a teaspoon of salt. I'm also going to salt the chicken before I before I put it in there. I have another little thing that I do with the chicken, which I'll show you in just a second, that I've discovered makes it makes it crisp up the skin really nicely. Okay, now then. Oops, put that down there. I just lift it up. I lift up the skin and separate it from the from the uh, flesh of the chicken. A little salt in there. The thing with chicken is to salt it well before it's cooked. Um, that's it. Really important. Get salt on the meat itself, and that's what helps improve the flavor. You don't really. I don't think you really need any other seasonings with it. Maybe a little pepper if you want, but uh, otherwise. Um, just a little, you can use your shaker if you've got one. I, I have one, I just forgot to use it. There we go. So salting the chicken uh, before it's cooked is really important for the flavor. All right, now I'm gonna get that up there. There we go. I'm not pulling it all the way, separating it. I'm just loosening it up so that it won't, uh, uh, so that it'll be loose from the from the chicken itself. And that's one of the things that allows the skin to crisp up better. It kind of just separates it that way. It still has a little bit of, of ice crystals in it. Uh, which is fine for the air frying. That's the nice thing. You know, if you're going to fry it in, in fat or in a skillet, it has to be uh, it has to be completely thawed uh, first in order to get done. But the air fryer is not that way. All right, let me throw that out or in the sink. And uh, now then, wash my hands. Pepper. I think I 
it needs a little more salt in the flour. There we go. So that's going to be a total about a teaspoon of salt in the half a cup of flour and maybe a half a teaspoon of black pepper. Just going to dredge the chicken in this. And this barley flour really well. And then I'm going to set it on this rack in this pan to dry a little bit. Now this is how my grandmother did it in regular flour for frying chicken. She never did use any kind of a batter. She used to, she just dredged the chicken really well in the flour mixture. There we go. We've discovered that, um, you know, Paul can eat barley without it affecting his blood sugar. So, um, we, uh, I'm trying to find new ways of using the barley flour. I know this is a mess. Sorry about that. I should have probably gotten a little bit bigger bowl. It would have fit these nice big, these nice big thighs in it a lot easier. There we go. All right, now then. Now I'm just gonna, I'm gonna save this uh, flour. It's too expensive to throw out. Um, but I'm going to use it to try making a gravy with uh, when we're when we're done with the chicken. So we'll see how that goes. Let me get my hands clean here, and I'll come turn you off until we get. I'm going to let these sit for about 10 or 15 minutes so they can uh, so that the flour will dry on them a little bit, and then I'll be back. Okay, now it's chicken's been sitting. Let's get to work here. Take the instructions out. Don't want to fry my instructions. Now, even though I've, I've uh, my favorite tongs broke and I haven't bought me any new ones yet so I just have this one pair that are not my favorites. All right, there we go. Now I'm just going to put two at a time in our little basket. Although it's small, it's it's plenty big enough for me and Paul. Um, we don't we really don't need a great big one because we're just not not hardly ever cooking for more than just us. So we occasionally have people over for dinner, but I probably wouldn't do much in the in, in the air fryer anyway if I did that. All right. Now then, I'm going to put it at 350, and I'm going to put it for I'm going to run it for 15 minutes, and then when it stops, I'll turn it over and and run it for another. I'm running it at 350 instead of 400 because well, I think I'll make it 375 since it does still have some ice crystals in there. I don't want to burn the uh, burn the skin before it gets cooked all the way through. All right, I'll see y'all. Okay, now then, my timer's gone off. So let's see. Oh, yeah, let me see if you can see. Can you see? Yep. Getting nice and brown. Now I'm going to turn them over. Beep, beep, beep. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn them over and let them cook. Then I'm going to flip them back and let the tops crisp up again before I uh, um, before it's all over with. All right, now let's set that for let's set that one for ten minutes this time. Now then, while we're uh, in the process of all this, let's just move down here a little ways. I'll fix the gravy. Get it going. Now then. <clears throat> get my skillet hot here. I think I've talked before about these old, uh, these old um, um, 
um, steel skillets the iron skillets are really too heavy for me to use for regular cooking anymore and so this skill steel skillet is great it's easy to it seasons up just like the old iron ones do Use a little avocado oil. I don't have any chicken drippings yet. About a, about a quarter cup. Let it get hot here. Now I want to be sure that I remember not to salt this gravy because it's already got salt in that in that uh, flour. Let's let that cook a little bit. I don't know if it's like a wheat flour, but wheat flour is always better if it cooks a little bit before you. Add the, needs a little more, little more oil. Didn't get quite enough in there for the amount of flour I had. You know, this is one of those things that you just kind of play it by ear when you're learning how to make it. There we go. Kind of want a little bit of a paste, not not a real crumbly. There we go. If you have too much oil, it'll it won't all take up in the flour, and it'll sit on top of your gravy. But if you don't have enough, the gravy get the, the flour gets too clumped up and you end up with lumps. This looks just about right. I don't have regular milk, so I'm gonna use half and half, and I'm gonna add a little water just because um, the half and half is so rich. You could do it just with half and half. And, and then, of course, the keto way we've all, we've been doing it was to uh, was to use um, um, cream and um, uh, cream cheese. And cream cheese works great to make a gravy with. It, it works really nicely. All right, there we go. Now let's get this going here. Oh yeah, there we go. This uh, this barley flour when I was flouring the chicken. It made it got sticky on my hands, just like regular flour does. So that suggested to me that it would thicken up real well. Now, well, I'm splattering everywhere. Let me get my whisk. Save, save me from making that big of a mess. There we go. The whisk is a secret for not having not having lumps. Or I could have added enough liquid right at the beginning. <laughs> that's why that's where the lumps come from is if you don't put enough enough liquid in there when you first start adding it and it uh, it cooks up all of a sudden and, and uh, turns lumpy. So alright, there we go. There we go. Now then. Oh, that's looking very pretty. Okay. Yes, that looks really good. Okay, now. Yeah, okay, now then. I don't need it to thicken completely up because I'm going to have to reheat it when the dinner's ready. All right, there we go. Look at there. Let me clean this off before I move that skillet. Won't be gravy on the bottom of it. There we go, okay. All right, now then. Let's just let that sit there and uh, add a little bit of water there and thin it down a little bit because I don't want it too thick while it's sitting and waiting for us and then I'll heat it back up and that'll thicken it back up when I'm ready for it. Okay, there we go. All right. All right, see y'all in a little bit. And here's our finished product. Um, this whole meal was made with barley. The chicken is coated in barley. That's, that's cooked pearl barley and then the gravy. It made a fantastic gravy and it tastes delicious. Um, and I think the uh, I think the chicken does too. So we'll see uh, we'll see what Paul thinks about it when he when he. Okay, now then we're going to check our temperature. Just make sure it's done. 
175 there we go 180 okay however you like it that's that's done now appreciate you all stopping by my kitchen thanks for thanks for coming see y'all another time okay Paul let's hear that again it's really good <laughs> the coating is crispy and the, it's really good cool thank you it's a lot faster true didn't it Yes, it did. Yeah, it came out really good. I'm really happy with it. All right. Thanks a bunch, y'all. Talk to you soon.